The West Bank refers to a thin, mostly hilly area between Israel and the Jordan River. And it's at the heart of a deep divide between Israel and the Palestinians. Since a Middle East war in 1967, it's been occupied by Israel. Before that, it was controlled by Jordan. Before that, by the British. And before that, it was part of the Ottoman Empire. But for centuries, it's been home to Palestinian Arabs, as many as three million of them today. And it's long been seen by most people as the heart of a future Palestinian state. In the years that followed the war in 1967, Israeli civilians, settlers, started moving into the West Bank. They are the children of Ofra, a new settlement of 40 Jewish families on what once was Arab land. Some saw it as a long overdue return to parts of their ancient biblical homeland. Slowly at first, but from the mid-1980s in larger and larger numbers. Pretty soon, there were settlements all over the West Bank. Israel says it needs to hold on to some of the territory for its security, and it says Jews have every right to return to their ancestral homeland. But according to most interpretations of international law, the settlements are illegal. Since 1967, the number of Israeli Jews living in the West Bank and East Jerusalem has continued to rise. Look at a map of the West Bank today and you see a confusing mess of settlements, some in blocks, some in isolated outposts, between and around Palestinian towns. There are fences, roads and checkpoints to keep the settlers safe. If this is where a future Palestine is supposed to be, it started to look less and less viable. But the one thing Israel hasn't done until now is annex the West Bank, making the settlements officially part of Israel and not just part of a military occupation. If the government does it now, Jewish settlers, who are already Israeli citizens, would formally be living on sovereign Israeli territory. And not just some of them, as envisaged in previous peace plans, but all of them. So why is all this happening now? Well, that's because in Donald Trump, Israel has perhaps the most pro-Israel American president there's ever been. You have been the greatest friend that Israel has ever had in the White House. Earlier this year, President Trump unveiled another peace plan. We've come a long way from the old 1967 lines. This plan sees Israel holding on to almost a third of the West Bank, far more than in any previous proposal. It does talk about a future Palestinian state in the ragged mess of what's left, but only after four years and only subject to strict conditions. For Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. He badly wants to be the leader who finally makes Israel's control over the West Bank a legal, irreversible fact. And he knows it may be a fleeting opportunity. After all, Donald Trump could be out of office in a matter of months if he fails to get re-elected in November. So will annexation go ahead? Netanyahu and his Israeli coalition partners haven't agreed on how and when to do it. They've yet to produce a map or a timetable. This is making the White House nervous. It wants Israeli leaders to agree among themselves before it gives them the green light. It doesn't know if Mr. Netanyahu will simply ignore the bit about a future Palestinian state, something most settlers definitely don't want. And there's all sorts of possible fallout. There could be violence. Palestinians may well see this as another, perhaps even the last, nail in the coffin for their dreams of statehood. And Israel could suffer enormous diplomatic damage around the world. Apart from the Trump administration, pretty much everyone is against annexation. 